We're gonna we're gonna get started with the meeting here in two minutes. Curious, is anyone else doing Thanksgiving this week? Or, or am I the only one that's going to come back a little bit heavier next week? It's the pecan pie. <laughs> that's what it is. It's both a blessing and a curse when you're the only one that enjoys pecan pie in your family. It just means you get to eat the whole thing. All right. Very good. We're a couple of minutes after. Let's let's get going. November 25th, the day before Thanksgiving in the US, we've got a set of holidays coming up. So welcome everybody. This is the Meshery development call. I'm hoping that I've got audio because uh, it's either that my jokes are really not funny today or uh, uh, or my audio isn't coming through, and I, I hope that it's the latter. I can confirm that it's coming through. <laughs> okay. And then uh, I'm, I'm crushed by what you didn't say, Michael. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, uh, very, evening very after, after a long day, so... Um, yeah. yeah, so you're, it's going it's to be a tough, tough crowd. Um, good. Uh, nice. Well, it's, it's nice to see everybody. Um, I do recognize that <clears throat> we're on the cusp of vacation season. Uh, for many of us, we'll have various holidays and things. Um, we will be sure to signal in advance if any of the meetings that we have each day, because we have a, a meeting each day, for the various projects that are going on. Um, we'll be sure to signal in advance if any of those um, are canceled. I haven't looked at the week of Christmas and kind of New Year's, but it's, 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 it's possible that we might not actually meet um, then. We certainly wouldn't meet on Christmas if that's, um, yeah. Uh, so, but it's nice to see everyone um, here now and a couple of new faces as well. We've got um, some agenda items. Everyone, well, actually, it may be the case that everyone on the call doesn't necessarily have access to the meeting minutes, which um, would be unintentional. Everyone should. Um, if you've been on a call before, you know that the meeting minutes are uh, a community effort. So, Please, please, if you're on the call, please do jump in and toss your name onto the list. Uh, we also have a, a small tradition um, to be sure to warmly welcome anyone who's new on the call for the first time. So before we jump into a couple of topics around the Meshery project, um, it would be nice to get to know anyone who's who hasn't been on a call before. Um, so if you haven't, do you want to? Do you want to take a moment to say hi? Just uh, you know, introduce yourself. Say where you're coming from, why you're here, what what's interesting to you, or or uh, and just to help. I think maybe because there's a couple of us that are new, I'll call out a couple of names. Uh, um, and, and so, um, <laughs> I'll call out a couple of names that I will mispronounce. Um, but actually the, um, this one here, Mr. Uh, the, the Sudarshan, you've been on, I think a call before, at least on the newcomers call. Is that right? Yeah. I'm new to this call. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, so if you would, um, introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, I call me Sudarshan. It's my name is a bit difficult to pronounce. And uh, I'm a third year computer science undergrad from Sri Lanka. And uh, I've been trying to get into Meshri community and got to know this community through uh, community bridge mentorships, but uh, I'm trying to get into this and I got time. Sorry, I couldn't, I joined the community last month, but I couldn't attend any calls uh, like meetings before. 
I'm trying to get in and contribute to the projects on this month on my, my commitment. Oh, nice, nice. Maybe we'll, we'll um, well, you're in luck, uh, Ruth, and some other community managers are here, so they can um, help with getting a foothold. Also, if you're not, this goes not only for um, Sudarshan, but by the way, Sudarshan, I know that's your last name. Do, do you end up going by Arun at all for your first name? Yeah, I, I think uh, my name is, I go in Slack, I go by Sudan Aruna. Sudan Aruna? Okay. All right. Um, well, this, this goes for you and then maybe for others who are new on the call as well. If you, if you haven't really found a point of interest or found a foothold on the projects or one of the projects, um, um, I'll, um, I'll chat you, I'll chat you up. I'll, I'll point your, you know, uh, point you to some areas of potential interest. So good, good to have you. Um, hmm. Lavinia, um, have you been introduced before? Hello. No, I haven't been introduced before. Um, um, nice to meet you, everyone. So I'm Lavinia from Romania. Um, I'm a friend of Adina. She told me a little bit about uh, this project and invited me to um, uh, participate as well. So here I am. Uh, I'm a software developer. Um, I have about uh, 10 plus years of experience. Uh, for the past two years, I've been working at Palpet. Uh, but unfortunately, due of COVID, I've been <laughs> let go. And currently, I'm in between jobs, but I would like to participate in some other open projects as well. Very good. Okay. Uh, we forgive you your trespasses for being friends with Adina, I guess. Is the, we'll just get that out of the way now. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, no. No, I, that was purely slathered in sarcasm. I'm sorry. No, um, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, very nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. And then, um, uh, is, is it to Tommy or Tommy? Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, so I'm Tommy and I'm a fifth year undergraduate student of computer science with economics. And um, yeah, I heard about Mesh Ritual, a community bridge mentorship program. Yeah, I'm hoping to get in like next batch. Like, yeah, so I just said I should just join the community like now and just see how it goes. That's a perfect plan. <laughs> yeah, um, you're already better positioned than those who join a month later. There are um, so, so welcome. Um, nice to have you, Tommy. Um, yeah, where about, whereabouts are you dialing in from? From Nigeria. Oh, okay. And maybe you might've said that actually. Um, very good. Um, nice. Good, 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 good. Uh, Vishal, I, I know you've introduced on at least another call before. Have the folks here gotten a chance to meet you? Oh yeah, that's right. And actually Vishal, I re recollect last time that you introduced, there were some audio challenges. So yep, there he is in, in chat. Good deal. Okay, and then Drew just joined. And so now we can start the Drew is here. Good, okay, good. Good to see some fresh faces. Awesome. Frankly, getting tired of some of the other people here. All right, a couple of topics. Uh oh, uh, oh, Utkarsh is with us. All right. Uh, let's. It, it, by the way, the topics that we have, they are open to more topics. So, uh, if you have topics, slap them in there. Um, 
um, Utkarsh, I think you're going to take us through some work that's been done on revamping the mastery adapters. Yeah, so basically some of the adapters are now using MeshKit and mystery adapter libraries. So I'd be basically showing the rewritten adapters. <clears throat> Very good. I'll I'll stop sharing and let you <clears throat> let you take people through it. I'll also um, quickly toss in a link to part of Meshery's architecture, so that those that are familiarizing with Meshery can go check out this slide deck. So there's there's a link to it in the meeting minutes now. Just. Quick question for Michu: Is the co the console adapter is like is Reva is on MeshKit now, or is, is like on? It's using Meshry adapter library. Yes, it is. It has been since uh, a couple of weeks ago, or three weeks ago. Nice. So I'm working on updating to the latest version, and there's just one little thing that needs to be. Uh, to be um, re-implemented in uh, in MeshKit because it didn't go, it didn't survive to move from the adapter library to MeshKit. <laughs> we need some templating. Um, <clears throat> was it the first adapter yeah. actually to be converted? Yeah, it was. Okay, all right. Um, I, I don't even know. I don't even know my own project anymore. So. No, you don't. <laughs> this is a, a bit embarrassingly. <laughs> it's a. <laughs> you I take it. Yeah, you you approved you approved the pull requests. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I just uh, just had this is embarrassing. I had a, a disagreement with my wife this morning, and uh, I suspect uh, I am. In the heat of the discussion, I didn't feel like I was wrong, but I think that maybe my memory is fading. Uh, and so this is more proof than like, yeah. Uh, okay, good, good. Michu, um, do you, you don't know pressure. Uh, this is just a, but um, t today's SMI call, is that too late for you? No, no, I'll join. Oh, okay, great. Right. It's on my Perfect. agenda. Yeah, I think it. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's uh, from seven to eight, I think. So that's okay. Uh, is this being visible? Yeah, this. Okay. <clears throat> so let me show the installation of Kuma Doctor. I mean, <laughs> okay. That is <clears throat> yes, yeah, so basically, uh, it's it's doing the same thing that it used to do, uh, that is installing Kuma service mesh, but uh, just not, uh, right now it is using the new library, uh, that is MeshKit and Mystery Adapter library. Uh, so a lot of code is now basically shared among uh, different adapters. One of which is Kuma, Tinkery is also almost complete. Uh, Nginx is also almost complete. Right now, okay, yeah, so installation is complete. So oh, I'm back, I didn't miss it. Yeah, so Kuma is installed and uh, Installation, uh, uninstallation, and it works too. Well, um, Utkarsh, would we know that Kuma is installed by looking at the dashboard? No, uh, right now we don't actually, uh, basically, we don't detect Kuma. We detect Istio, uh, Linkery, Console, and uh, NSM, I guess. Yeah, NSM, I guess. We don't uh, right now detect the uh, Kuma. We can add it. Uh, I haven't actually 
looked at that into it yet. We do. I suspect you might be able to do that before the call ends. You might be able to do it that quickly. Not, not that that's a challenge or anything. But, um, then uh, Anirud, thanks for coming. We are going to talk about Mastery CTL here in a bit, but um, but if you got to go, uh, talk to you soon. Um, so Udkarsh, as part of this um, overhaul of the adapters, w there's a number of things that um, that I think will benefit the project. So d d by um, just for reference and context for everyone else who's who's watching the update here, um, if you've used Meshery before, what Utkarsh is showing is not any different from what you would have seen before. What he's showing is the fact that uh, for the nine different adapters that the project has, there's been a lot of repetition and redundancy in, of code um, for each, each service mesh that's supported has its own adapter. And that code has literally been repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated, and repeated, and repeated, and repeated, and repeated nine times. And, and so um, Michael and Abhishek and uh, a couple of others have worked to Help us stop, help the project stop repeating itself. Um, and so, uh, Utkarsh is showing um, showing off uh, basically a, a V, you know, a, a second edition, a rearchitecture of the adapters, at least um, of a few of them. Um, and so, we're going to be chewing through the rest of the list soon. A couple of benefits outside of being able to work more efficiently, have higher quality of code. There's a couple of um, feature or functional benefits that um, come out of this. One of those is that, um, well, so each of the service, each of Meshery's adapters has its own version number, um, which is both intentional and it's also kind of a pain in, pain in the rump. Um, it's intentional because each adapter, each individual service mesh, Istio, Kuma, Linkerd, they all have their own life cycle. They all advance in, on their own cadence. They all um, are their own independent projects. Some update faster than others. Uh, consequently, some of Meshery's adapters update faster than others. And so it makes sense that they have their own version number. They have their own life cycle. Well, the, so that's good. That's by design. But what's a pain about it is that as a user, um, as a user of Meshery, if you end up having, if you end up running into trouble finding a bug, um, or you just want, you know, and you want to report that, well, Meshery server has a version number. The Meshery UI doesn't have its own version number. It's the same as the server, so that's nice. Each adapter, though, has its own version number. And the Meshery client, Meshery CTL, the command line client, it has its own version number. So it starts to get a little bit arduous um, to track down, to like report a bug and say, well, this is the version that I'm running. You're not always able to just say it's version 4.23 you might have to list out all the components. There's a, probably, a, that's a separate kind of discussion about, um, about our release process and how to improve upon that. But having these new adapters um, enable us with some new functionality. One of them is, Utkarsh, if you go to the dashboard, the homepage of Meshery, um, on the lower right-hand side, in the past, you had worked on um, the functionality around release channels and version numbers. So the lower right-hand corner, there's um, the Meshery UI is reporting what version Utkarsh is running. He's running, um, he's on the stable release channel. He's running version 4.22. As it turns out, actually, there's a later version that's available. Um, and so he, he gets an indication of that here in the UI. So that's nice. Actually, Utkarsh, um, I'll try to take some meeting minutes as we go, but um, there's an opportunity for us 
when there is a new version available to have a hyperlink to that, uh, maybe to show the release notes or to have a tooltip that shows people the mesh free CTL command to update it, or maybe, uh, you know, or, or something. Um, but the other thing that's um, missing here is, well, you know, you, it looks like you've got a few, you've got at least one adapter running in your environment, the Kuma adapter, and I'm not sure what version of that adapter you're running. But with this new framework, that becomes a lot easier. So do we have that now at our, does Meshri UI have that at its fingertips? Or Meshri server no, have that? No, I no, I don't think uh, right now uh, we basically send back the version of adapter that we are running. But uh, actually, adapter is uh, like adapter does know what version of adapter is. Basically, uh, the adapter is familiar of its own version, so it's just that we have to send it back to the server and then to the UI. But adapter has that cap capability. Taking some notes. Um, Abhishek or Mihu, any other, anything else that we should demo or talk about with respect to uh, the fact that there, the, you know, the adapter has been overhauled here? No, nothing I can think of right now. I think it, uh, one of the benefits is also that you actually really can focus on the service mesh specifics and all the plumbing is somewhere else. And uh, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah the, 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 pay, this, the pace by which each of the adapters is being, re, is being rewritten is something of a testament to how much easier it is. Um, yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, anybody else have feedback for Udkarsh on this? Udkarsh, is there anything? So the, this, this will run um, the SMI conformance test in the current release of the Kuma adapter. Like, have these changes been released? Uh, they have been, like, I still have to push it uh, to the repository. I tried running uh, SMI conformance test. It was, it was running, but like um, my system has uh, resource constraints. So uh, actually it, it didn't throw any kind of error, but it was taking uh, very long. So maybe uh, Abhishek might test it on, on, it, on his system. Uh, my system has a, a bit of resource constraints. It's still something that needs to be tested, uh, but on a, on a positive side, it didn't throw any kind of error also. Okay, very good. Yeah, if we can get it released before the SMI meeting, that'll be that'll be great. It'd be great to show that you know there's three adapters that run SMI conformance. So. All right, all right, very good. Uh, let, let's go back to the meeting minutes, if we could. A couple of couple of quick notes. Um, one is mostly just for, for everyone else that um, if you don't have access to these meeting minutes or to the Meshery architecture, please just say so in the chat and I'll, we'll get you that access right now so that you can have a productive call. Um, next topic up. Uh, so Kush um, has a, uh, an item to discuss on Meshery CTL. Kush is, well, at his third, third dental appointment this week. So uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that he's not in much pain, but um, irrespective, uh, Meshery has release channels, which we were just seeing in the UI. Um, and so, um, which we were just seeing in the UI, to told me if you, when you click on either of the two of those hyperlinks and it says you don't have access, if you, if you will click uh, request access, and that'll help. We'll, that'll help get it to you. 
uh, meshery release channels. So <clears throat> we could see that there are two release channels that meshery has. has meshery as a project has a stable release channel and a, an edge release channel. We actually get fairly specific with, um, uh, or, or we, we tell users what to expect about those release channels, their, their cadence and level of support. Um, the effort that we put into that thought about level of support and cadence um, can be reused some as we look to um, get Nighthawk as a as a related project. I should take this quick note benefit from um, Meshery's release cadence and strategy. But um, so even though there are those two release channels, the edge one is you know, what I expect most of you think it is, which is fair, um, not willy nilly, but um, you might find some bugs if you're running it. Uh, although you would be able to test out the latest features that way. The stable channel releases less frequently. We're still improving upon all of the tests that are run. Um, but we're really quick to try to fix any issues that we find in, on the stable channel. The, the challenge right now is that users don't have the ability or the, don't easily and conveniently have the ability to switch between one release channel versus the next. So I'm gonna, we'll sh show you how that's, it, that, that can be done in a couple of ways today. People can switch between a stable channel or the edge channel um, on the CLI or I'm sorry, um, in, in, by editing um, part of Meshery's configuration, but it's a little bit inconvenient and it feels like you're maybe doing something you shouldn't be doing as a user. So, so let me show you what Kush is looking to do with um, a new Meshery CTL command. And maybe we'll get, everyone can weigh in and get some feedback on this. this. Meshery CTL is the command line client for Meshery um, on, my system, I'm, I'm not running Meshery server at the moment. Uh, so, so it's just the CLI that I've got installed right now. And uh, this is a good note actually. Um, Drew, did you mind, can you take this note if you would? It, um, we're being pretty verbose here. Yeah. And I wonder. Um, so today, to switch between release channels, um, you'll edit Meshery's config, Meshery's um, big on your local system. Meshery, like other apps, um, stores part of its configuration under a hidden file in the user's home folder. Um, by the way that it works today is if you're using Meshery CTL, it, it Meshery CTL more or less more assumes or less. that you're running Meshery in Docker on your local machine. That needs to change. Um, but to switch between edge and release channels, you'll go into this file and you'll switch, you'll change the Docker tag. Stable latest to edge latest. And um, Utkarsh, there might be a little bit of an echo on your um, microphone. Cool. All right, let's get through this. Uh, so so um, that's kind of inconvenient and people have to go edit a YAML file. They could fat finger something. They could misspell edge um, instead of that. Uh, the proposal here and what uh, Kush is working toward is to create a new Meshery CTL system subcommand. Today, the system commands um, include the following list Meshery CTL system start, stop. These are things to control Meshery's lifecycle, the lifecycle of Meshery as a tool get the logs from Meshery and its adapters. Um, and so he's, you know, the design is to bring forth a new subcommand called channel. 
Um, so meshery CTL system channel. And then to pass in a flag, edge or stable to be able to switch between the two. Very simple, you know, thing. In the future, it may make sense then to add on another flag. So if someone wanted to pin to a particular version that they could, you know, because they want to stay, they don't want to be on stable latest, they want to be on stable and then pin it to one version. So we should capture that actually. Okay. Any, any discussion there? Any comments on that? One of the comments that I have, and so Anirudh, are, are you on? Okay, um, I think he was wanting to talk about Meshri CTL. Um, if he was, we could have talked about using Meshri CTL to deploy Meshri to Kubernetes. That needs to be done and hasn't been. And it's not, it hasn't been, not so much because that's difficult to do, like that's actually pretty easy. Um, it hasn't been done because we need to agree on what the, that command structure would be. So, so something for us to talk about, something for us to write down. Actually, that, that's the problem is like, it needs to be written down and well thought out. Like, all right. Um, okay, then there's a couple of other topics to, to touch on, to talk about. So. There's some things that are in need of volunteers. Um, these were a couple of things off the top of my head that may or may not strike an area of interest for any one of you, um, or they might. So this, this first one, um, by the way, the support for this um, command, it's, if you look up these uh, issues and the related issues, they're over a year old, like we made them back in September 2019. Um, and it's kind of the same thing for this uh, first issue. So if this strikes an area of interest for anyone, um, that, you know, it would be great if you, if you took a crack at it. So this issue has to do with continuous integration. Um, it has to do with GitHub Actions and our release process. So today, Meshery and its components releases using, or its continuous integration is done through GitHub Actions and, and workflow described in GitHub Actions. So um, GitHub Actions work fairly similar to other continuous integration systems. There's workflow that, that um, um, initiates any time that we merge that code is merged in and it, uh, different code is compiled, uh, you know, binaries are built, maybe they're packaged into a Docker file and just, you know, maybe tests are run, things like that. So fairly straight, fairly standard set of processes, but there's, there's one that's missing and, and it's um, bad for our, the users of Meshery so one of them that's missing is what's being highlighted in this um, here. So to say it briefly, every time that we make a release, a release comes with notes about what changed from the prior release to this one. And those notes are automatically cataloged in a specific way. So here's the latest release of Meshery. This was released just a couple of days ago. It had included 30 commits um, from one, two, three, four, from five people. And then it 
um, these, these notes here, they're very detailed and not extraordinarily human readable. Um, and hence they're called release notes. And so they're just um, really specific. The, the, actually we have an opinion about um, a change log, release notes, a release announcement and feature um, walkthroughs. All of, these, all of these things are needed and it depends upon who the reader is and what they're trying to learn. Some will really benefit from detailed release notes because they're looking for a particular bug to be fixed, something like that. Other people wouldn't really benefit from this because they're like, well, I don't really, I don't know what that means. So that sounds great, you know, but how does that help me? And so there needs to be a write-up about Helm charts and how to use them and how that, what the changes were. Anyway, there's a lot of, there's a, any number of contributors um, and a lot of changes that go through. And so part of the process is to have very specific release notes. Well, there's a GitHub action, it's called release drafter. All the GitHub actions, by the way, there, you can see them in the GitHub, in Meshery's repo. And actually all of the layer five repositories you can go to dot GitHub. Um, and in that folder, you'll find a few, a few things. One of the folders you'll find, all of these are more or less, let me take it back. Anyway, under the workflows folder, you'll find um, a set of GitHub actions. These are just YAML files that invoke a GitHub action. So for anyone wanting to get familiar, you can actually invoke a GitHub action right now. <laughs> and, uh, and you can invoke it by starring the project. Um, so one of the things that, that each of the, or starring this project or any of the repositories, any of layer five's repositories have this same GitHub action defined, which is when you click to star the project, uh, you know, that's, an, that's something that you're doing inside of GitHub. Um, GitHub um, and this action watches for that. If it sees that a new star has been added, it will invoke this workflow. It's a very short workflow, it's 16 lines. But what the workflow does is sends a notification to uh, Slack, to the layer five Slack. And so if you go to the buzz channel, which you wouldn't know it, but this is the unique ID for the buzz, the buzz channel. In there, you'll see notifications like, oh, someone just started meshery or whatever repository it was. Anyway, that little integration and that notification, that's done through GitHub Actions. You can do a lot of things in GitHub Actions. One of the things that we've, the project has been needing and hasn't been done is the publishing of these notes, just a verbatim copy of like this um, markdown. That's all that it is, it's just, it's just markdown. The copying of this, from the markdown here to um, the markdown in the docs folder. Docs. So there's a, a meshery documentation site. And on there, there's a page for releases or release notes reference. If I could find it. Uh, somewhere in here, anyway. Um, so uh, that's the that's the call for volunteer. Anybody interested in? Is anyone interested in this in GitHub Actions? Releases. Here's the release notes page. It's just a copy of what was released, and you can see that we're two releases behind, so we haven't updated these. And that's that's the issue. We just want to automate that because otherwise one of us poor humans has to go do it. Okay. If you're interested in it, um, you know, um, signal and... Uh, 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 can I work on this? Yeah. That's, that's it. That sounds great. Yep. So, um, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, my screen shows the document meeting uh, minute, meet, uh, meeting minutes. 
I think I left the Zoom and came back, joined back. I think it got stuck. I'm not sure whether it's the problem. Oh, okay. Um, right now we're okay. showing meeting minutes. Okay. What is the GitHub app? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, good question. So, Arun, thanks for raising your hand. Like, uh, Arun, um, will help you in getting that down if you run into problems. That's great. So then um, to Anirudh's question, so switching topics to like other, other potential areas for volunteers is, well, there's a couple of what, what yeah, I would more or less consider a couple new projects or a couple of new features um, to look at. So one of them takes the form of a GitHub app. The other one takes the form of a Slack bot or a Slack app, Slack bot. So, um, uh, there's a number. <coughs> like, why do you need a GitHub app? Because uh, it's like Slack bot is fine. Yeah, integrating the Slack bot with GitHub and then, uh, you know, transversing messages, vice versa. Uh, but GitHub app, like we do, we already have a GitHub app, right? Like, I mean, GitHub has the GitHub app. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Those are all correct statements. Um, so the the thought here about a Slack um, a Slack bot is um, well is the notion that if you're using Meshery to help operate your infrastructure, and maybe you want to maybe you've got Meshery operator running or Meshery running, you wanna deploy a new service mesh, or you'd like to get notification that one of the configuration best practices um, is not being adhered to. You can either go to the Meshery UI and see that, or- Wouldn't that be the Meshery app itself? Uh, could be um, that it would, it itself would need to uh, be a Slack bot app or interact with Slack. And we'd have to have instructions for people to, you know, um, allow it to message into their, um, into Slack. Uh, so there's kind of a set of use cases around Meshery doing that or mm -hmm. some component in Meshery doing that. Um, there's also a set of use cases um, actually just in this is a probably a different bot, but today um, we uh, or today we use um, a little bit of automation in the layer five community in the slack. So mm -hmm. actually, so Tommy and Lavinia curious, did you guys did you gals get a message from a slack bot? <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I did not understand the question. Oh, yeah. um, in, when, you, when you join the Slack workspace, did you get yeah. a message from the bot? Uh, I haven't joined it yet. Oh, I'm about to. Okay. <laughs> okay. When you do, uh, I'm curious to know if you get a message from the, the bot. Okay. Uh, so. And then uh, Tommy, do, do you remember if you did? Yeah, sorry, I didn't get that. Um, Lamarina's background noise was overshadowing your voice. So. Um, in the layer five Slack, did you get a notification from a bot about resources? Auto code? No, no, I didn't. Mm, okay, I think we have a lazy bot. Either that or a broken bot. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, so th there's kind of a, a couple of uses for a Slack bot, like for interacting with Slack. One of them is having is having Meshery do that, and more or less creating support in Meshery for webhooks. Um, and then the other one is helping automate uh, uh, some of the community management uh, and making sure that people have access to docs and things like that. Um, so if that strikes, forget, yep. like in these issues need volunteer for getting the uh, Meshery CTL mesh commands that are yet to be implemented. 
Okay, say it again. Metricetial mesh. There uh -huh. are a ton of commands that needs implementing. Yeah, you could put it on the, the topics list. Yeah, we did cover a little bit on mesh free CTL earlier. Uh, but yeah, so I want, I want to finish off the rest of these topics if I can, kind of a call for help. Uh, and that is that there's the, there's also the need for a GitHub app. So today when, um, I don't know that all of you have seen this, but um, has anyone run um, Meshery's configuration uh, validator? on the Istio. Uh, the Istio adapter. If you haven't, then um, you're in luck. I'll show you real quick. So one of the functions that um, the Istio adapter, and I'm hopeful that the other adapters will get to soon, so Michael, to your point about the adapters being, um, a lot of the machinery and the mechanics of the adapters now being standardized so we can go focus on more service mesh specific functionality. One of those pieces of functionality is like, um, is analyzing the configuration of your service mesh. So the, the runtime configuration of the mesh and whether or not maybe you don't have MTLS enabled or maybe you don't. Maybe you don't have um, a full quorum of your console um, servers, or it, actually, there's a list of those things for console specifically. Um, let me share my other screen. Only one of the adapters today has a list of configuration best practices, and that is the Istio adapter. So I believe that Istio is installed locally for me. If I go to the Istio adapter, um, this validate service mesh configuration can run a, um, can a um, basically a, a check against some best practices to see if, if Istio is healthy, like my deployment is healthy, or maybe I'm not doing something like I should. And our hope is that eventually people can operate service meshes with confidence because of things like this, because, because there's a lot of baked in, um, you know, either best practices or, or other into meshery. So, so that's helpful for checking the runtime config of your mesh. So just now, I'm running Istio on my machine. I'm running Meshery on my machine. Meshery reached out, interrogated Istio, looked at some stuff and said, it told me, Lee, you're mostly doing okay, but like in a few areas, you're not. All right, well, that's great. I mean, that's great. And also some people might complain that like, well, geez, that's great. Like, why, why, why are you telling me after the fact? Like, wouldn't it have been nice you Meshery would have told me before that even happened? Um, well, how would mesh we do that? Well, I don't know. I store all of my um, service mesh configuration as code. I practice infrastructure as code. Um, and uh, so why doesn't mesh just take a look at, um, you know, I store that in GitHub. Here, here mesh I, I didn't I authenticate to mesh using, uh, didn't I authenticate using my GitHub handle? So like, you have access to my GitHub repo anyway. Why don't you go, Meshri, why don't you go take a look? You, you know, why don't you do static analysis on my configs? Well, I'll tell you why Meshri doesn't. It's because no one has volunteered to write a GitHub app yet. <laughs> it's not, it, it's, uh, I think for both of these Slack bot, the Slack bot and the GitHub app, like it's, um, much of the implementation will probably be done in Meshery itself. So probably ideally in, in Golang, um, there is, um, it is possible to write those things separately or to like run a Slack bot separately. Um, but yeah, those are the two concepts. So, so kind of to Annie Rude's point, those are um, 
you know, you can think of them in different ways, but, uh, but in this way, these are different um, than what we have today. Are either of those two interesting to anyone? Or something that people think they could be successful with? Those that know Golang? And those that are not already on, on task somewhere else? So Anirudh, you're right. For, for you, it is, you, you are disallowed from volunteering. So anyway, think about it. Okay, uh, next topic. And so yep, Anirudh, you're right. We won't be able to get into this today. Um, but next topic is that we've got a, a meeting coming up um, in the Service Mesh Interface uh, community meeting. So it's expanded to an hour today to talk about conformance. Um, details of that are on the layer five calendar. And then um, we don't really, this isn't really a topic to discuss, but just a note. So does anyone else have topics? Or anyone else have maybe questions about the project? Or something? Yeah, can I? Yeah. Like uh, I'm, I was struggling to uh, install the machinery. Like normally, I, I was, I'm using Fedora 32, and uh, I use most of my container applications using Podner. So currently, I am being issue to install Docker's because defaultly it doesn't uh, Fedora 32 doesn't support Docker's. Like, is it possible? Like, uh, yeah, is there a plan to use Podner in the future? Okay, to, wait, to say it again, to use what in the future? Like uh, Podman, a support for Podman also. Oh, oh, Podman. Um, wow, is it really the case that Fedora doesn't support Docker? Uh, like, I think uh, wow. Fedora 32 doesn't have a Docker support yet because they were more yeah. like using G group, G group version 2 or something. Yeah, that's amazing. Are you able, and so you're not able to, you're not even able to s install Docker, huh? Yeah, I installed Docker and uh, I think it messed up with uh, Podman and I couldn't run my other apps. So I'm, I wanted to, like, I'm trying to install Windows on Dual Boot and trying to get it, the, uh, trying to get uh, Docker and install, like, set up my machinery development environment. I'm struggling in that. Okay. Okay. Are you okay? Wait. So let me clarify. Did, were you able? Um, I think the answer is like. Uh, we, there's. Um, it'd be great to support Podman. It's um, not something that is on the immediate. It would take volunteers and others to to do that. That would be great. It, it hasn't been on the core roadmap. Have you tried installing Docker on Fedora 32? Yeah, like uh, I have tried it. Like it's trying. I when I install Docker, like the Podman doesn't work. I need Podman for some of my other uh, projects that I'm working on. So. Gotcha. Yeah, understood. Um, another way of running. Um, hmm. Yeah. Do you do you run Kubernetes? Yeah, I was trying to, that also had problems because uh, I don't know what caused struck me. I'm sorry, I couldn't clearly remember the issue. But I was trying sure. to get into that and I had some problems also after clicking to the video. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I see where you're, where the challenge is. Mm -hmm. You might be a good one to to like bring Podman support to the project. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that would be great. But um, I think I'm a skill engineer. Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so in, in the meantime, yeah, just uh, getting you access to a system that has. Docker or has a Kubernetes installation that uses Docker. 
No, not because I was uh, installing Windows and getting Docker in that. So okay, yeah. This week, password. Nice. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Good, good question. Um, it's not the. This is the second time that I've had someone ask that. In the year and a half of the project being here, yeah, it's unfortunate that um, Red Hat and Docker didn't get along for a while. I don't think that having Podman is helpful to the ecosystem, but uh, but uh, but it, it sure does create a challenge for your environment, and then consequently for the project too. So. Um, let, you know, do, do, if you do, do keep notes or what have you, like, I'd be interested in the, um, you know, helping you get a working Docker environment. Uh, I didn't keep uh, track of the notes. Like I was trying to install, I referred some blogs posts and uh, I couldn't successfully implement both the support. Like, I didn't come to a stage where both are working. So. I removed Docker again, like I installed it and I removed because of Podman and sorry, I, I don't have those details yet. Like well, I didn't keep track of the issues. No yeah, no, no problem. As you try to do it again, I or I rather I just meant to say, hey, if you need some help, if you need some help as you go through that, we'll try to try to help if we can. There's a support channel um that in the Slack that might be helpful to you. Uh, and then, anybody else have topics? Um, so, yeah, I, I do. I actually, I, I have a question. So, do we have a roadmap, uh, like a, a metric development roadmap or something? Like, does it exist? Yeah, there's one in the uh, community drive. It is okay. not. It, it's more of a listing of a lot of the things that we'd like to see accomplished in the project, but it's not a, um, it's not a uh, description of here's what would happen and when, like, like, hey, by the dot five release, it would be this, it would be that. We can lay that out um, to uh, my other conversation that I'd had with you on this. Um, it is uh, futile if you don't have consistent contributors um, it really doesn't okay. matter. And so kind of a waste of time to write it down. And it's confusing to people. And most people that come don't understand. They aren't seasoned enough to get it. Um, we're fortunate now that there's a few that are uh, indentured servants <laughs> that are like in an internship or, or employees to like be consistent and have some, you know, for us to be able to make some statements and say, by this time, we should have this thing. So that, yeah, but that's that's in part why that's the, the probably the largest reason why there isn't like this well curated roadmap of things because it would be like uh, just a wish list, or, you know, without any um, muscle behind it. But um, it's here. There's there's a Google Doc here. Um, in the past, we've had a project board on GitHub. Uh, same thing, like. It's hard enough to get people to sign a DC, uh, sign off on their commit, or even make a commit that doesn't have you know conflicts or what have you. Like it, um, the the roadmap and uh, what we would like to do goes on for miles, and uh, this doesn't even this doesn't even cover it. I mean, if you were to take what we want to do with Wasm and WebAssembly, <clears throat> let's let's create another doc and we'll we'll fill that in. But um, but it, that doesn't mean that it um, there's some diligence um, shouldn't be done. Like particularly on the mesh map project, there are people dedicated to it who are um, hitting on it and um, having additional structure there. That'd be that would be helpful. Like that is needed. Um, and and and, and we and let, we'll do that. Um, th this doc, though, is good to absorb, and for anyone who wants to make comments or updates, you know, you know please do. Um, good to absorb because it, it gives a sense of, um, well, something like this, like, hey, if you're going to 
if you have an existing application, you want to bring it onto the service mesh. Maybe your application already has retries configured. You bring it onto the mesh. You configure retries on the mesh. You're doing duplicate retries. Like maybe that library that they used, we should facilitate displacing it. That's a project. That's a, that's a chunk of work because there's a few popular client libraries, um, each language specific that would need to be hooked into, analyzed. It would probably require a GitHub app to really do that in the right way. So another use case for static analysis. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. It's a good question, Anirudh. Hopefully, that, does that answer your question? Yep, totally does. Uh, all right, well, we're at just that time. Anybody, anybody have anything else? And Anirudh, le absolutely, like uh, we, should, we should definitely progress on Mesh CTL Mesh. And I think, do you have a, can you, you, you have a proposal out there, I think, right? It needs some, some comments on it. Mm, yeah, I guess I already have a dog that's uh, ready for new contributors to try out. I don't know, okay. like if I've uh, got it off the internet, but uh, let me just have a look, I'll drop a link there. Is this doc here, the Meshery CLI commands and documentation? Uh, or there, uh, like I uh, can, can you go to the end of it if I've added uh, it there? Okay, so it's not added here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it's this guide to mesh free uh, CLI mesh commands. So, okay, where should I put it? I'll put it on chat. Okay. Nice, good, yeah. And then um, I'll uh, after you put it on chat, we'll do a quick poll and see if there's um, time that people want to meet who are interested. But it's, yeah, not, let's, let's uh, it's in chat right now. All righty, uh, very good. Um, very nice to meet um, some newcomers. I, thanks for everybody for being on. T Tommy, I'm sorry. I said we'll, we'll get you that access to the docs right away. Um. Regarding uh, Nighthawk, um, I joined the Envoy channel. I looked up for Otto. He wasn't available, so I didn't write anything and so on. It's, 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 and then again, I kind of forgot you, what you actually need because um, I need to search in my notes and that's eh, not, not something I did. Oops. I look up on the SMP recording, and yeah. the only thing I remember I, I started is to rebuild the Nighthawk. Is that what you need, or it? Oh. Yeah, it, it starts there, like. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, that's the so thing. Good. I'll, I usually uh, do something as then it is required, so I like to start with what is required. Yep, sounds good. Uh, there's a task section in this doc that um, we can probably fill in. Oops, I sent that to the wrong. But in the the get the get night doc, as a matter of fact, there's a. Uh, I'll go do a couple things. I want to introduce you to Otto in that channel as well as Jacob, and then we'll put some tasks in. But but yeah, the the essence of it is to just be able to begin to build Nighthawk to different target OSs. So yeah. first, a Linux one will will be good enough. Or you it, want? It would, yeah, like it, yeah. If you take a look at the one that uh, Meshery builds to, that would be ideal. The one that Meshery built, I don't know where to look. Sorry. Uh, in the GitHub actions under, or even in um, <clears throat> like the Docker file. I'm here. Probably that would be perfect. Me. Okay, very good. We're a few minutes over. Um, thanks, everyone. Sorry about that. No, no, no. It's, uh, uh, Adina, I'll, I'll send you a couple of links. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you all. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. 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 -bye.